welcome back to the channel. The weather's been kind of cold the last uh, five or six days, but today they're calling for mid 50s after lunch. Uh, it's supposed to clear up, and become sunny. Right now it's a little chilly, it's windy, but I figured it'd be a good time to get out here. The ground's frozen, got as low as I think 16 last night. So I figured we'd get out here on the, the lawn and, and get this tree down. It's on the north side of the property in the woods there. It's a dead ash or white oak, I believe. It's been there for uh, at least three years dead. I've seen it when I've mowed the grass out front. It's a dangerous tree. It's not close to the house, but I'm just worried it's gonna come down on its terms and not mine. So today is the day it needs to come down. Firewood season's almost over, so I wanna get this thing down and processed. And I have one other tree I wanna get down to, but due to a sleepover from a kid, his car is parked um, right by that tree, so it's a little too close, and here it is at 8 o'clock in the morning, I don't want to wake boys up to move that car. So we'll work this tree, maybe get to that split top either later today or maybe sometime next week. Now you can see here, um, we're both kind of looking at this tree, I don't know exactly which way this thing wants to fall. It appears if it wants to fall to the west, which is to the yard side, which would be the better side to fall. If it falls back to the east, um, it will fall in the woods, which sometimes can become a problem. So I took a notch out of the west, the, the east side of the tree, thinking it was going to fall to the east into the woods, and this is what happened. Oh, shit. <laughs> Luckily, it came down, but it's pretty dead. You can see when it hit the ground, it pretty much shattered. That's just dead limbs up there. Um, I'm hoping the core of the tree is still good. That's where I get all the firewood from. The branches and stuff, we'll either burn those or throw them back in the woods for now. But as we look at this thing, it's it's been dead for a while. So we are starting the cleanup process of this tree. Luckily my buddy Dave came over today to work for some smoking wood and uh, he's gonna handle all the dead branches, the small stuff that we can't use as firewood. He's also gonna transport the logs that I saw um, back to the firewood process area. When you got two people, it, it goes pretty quick. When it's just one of you, it's a lot of work. Whenever I work on trees or dropping trees, I usually like to have a second person here. I know a lot of people have been hurt, or actually I know a person has been killed by a falling tree. So I always take this seriously really honestly don't like doing this type of work but it's part of the property and it's something that has to be done all the time and it's just something I like just really put a lot of extra care and thought into now unfortunately my blade on my I guess my chain on my saw became very dull this is an older tree it's got a lot of dirt on it um, which will dull that chain down a little quicker plus it wasn't the sharpest chain in the world anyways so like I said in earlier videos a lot of times I'll take these chains and drop them off at the local Kubota dealer and they'll sharpen them up I think it's seven bucks they got a fancy machine that sharpens these things up so it's pretty cheap to go take them down there and I can get a lot of cut time out of a chain but in this situation I had no other sharpened blades or chains and uh, I have a sharpening tool, okay, I'll put it in the description, I can't remember it's a steel. It's okay, it's an all-in-one type following tool. It's hard to ch uh, sharpen chains, you gotta really know what you're doing, but this tool helps out a lot, so that's what I did there. Dave's making numerous trips back to the firewood processing area. I'm trying to get this trunk, it's technically hung up a little bit where it came off of the stump. And they actually had some pieces back there in the back side of a smaller portion of this tree that I took down that I threw up front here. It's pretty light wood, so it's been been dead for a long time. You know, the longer it's dead, the longer it decays. The longer it decays, the least uh, efficient it is when you burn it. So you really want to get to the dead trees fairly quick. Within the first few years or so, it would be great. Or this is probably, like I said, two or three years old dead. There I am running one back um, to this processing area full full load I think I dropped one here but anyways uh, the tractor is instrumental to this type of work I don't know how I would do without it it saves so much more um, energy 
by transporting these logs. I can't imagine trying to get these logs, like hand walking those over to the uh, splitting area. This thing works phenomenal. The only thing is it doesn't have a huge bucket, so I wish I could get more on there, but it works and uh, gets the job done. Okay, the uh, final loads here, finishing up this tree. Dave's been very really helpful today. It's like I said, it goes so much quicker with two people and you'll see that here in a minute when we do the firewood processing part of this video. But as I make these uh, three quarter cuts, basically I'm cutting through the log about three quarter of the way through. Dave's gonna come over with the all-in-one tool that's gonna lift this log off the ground so I can finish up the the remainder of the 25% of the cut and it keeps my chain from hitting the ground and dawn it up. Back at it again, the old uh, homemade log splitter fired right up. And uh, Dave decided he wanted to do some splitting before he got out of there. So he's on the uh, splitter first. And what I'm doing is I'm basically staging wood behind him to make it as convenient as possible for him to keep splitting. And then also what I'm doing is using the tractor bucket to actually lift the, higher, the heavier logs off the ground and getting those up to Dave's waist, side, waist height so it's just a matter of transferring from right to left instead of actually bending over and picking these things off the ground. I normally just roll them onto the tractor too, so the bucket, so it, it helps both of us out and either of us are lifting the heavier part of the logs. So this wood, it's not the best wood in the world, so it's, like I said, I think it's an ash, possibly a white oak, and it's not the um, kind of type of wood that I would use for smoking. So like I told Dave, and what we plan on doing with all these logs is just basically, it's basically make it at, um, firewood. No smoking wood at all, none of it's really that good. So uh, we'll throw it on the big pile we got forming in front of us there and, and go to town. It took us about an hour and a half to knock out all those logs. I think Dave, Dave knocked them out for about 45 minutes, and I was, I was at it for another 45 minutes here by myself. Dave had to leave. It goes pretty quick. Very peaceful doing this type of work. I enjoy it. It's um, relaxing. And it's a good workout too. So I don't know it's how good of a workout it is until usually tomorrow uh, when I can't move. But for the most part, I really enjoy it. You can also see the weather starting to turn a little bit. We're starting to clear out a little bit. And uh, the sun is getting ready to pop through the clouds. Close to 50 degrees, I'm getting a pretty good sweat at this point. Just chugging away and making this pile in front of me a lot bigger than uh, it was several weeks ago. Now my son has stated that he wants to help me stack that firewood in the near future. We'll see if that happens or not. It's going to be a lot of work. I don't know how many cords I got there. I would think I'd probably have at least three to four cords sitting in front of us. But if I can get a bunch of people to help um, stack this stuff up, it goes really, really quick. 
I need to go to Lowe's or Menards probably and get the posts needed to form the rows, stack the wood. Like I said, I'm kind of undetermined where I want to put this at, but I've learned that you never want to go east and west stacking, or I guess north and south stacking firewood. The wind will blow the pile over, which you probably seen on other videos. My pile continues to get blown over because I have several different rows of firewood that's actually stacked north and south. So I'm guessing I'll probably just go ahead and stack this real close to the pile just behind me here and eventually sell most of this wood next fall. Or I guess this fall and slash into next winter. Chloe got her done. About four hours. Started around 8 a.m., knocked it out by noon, and now the weather is just fine for just in Indiana. Well, if you like this type of content, like and subscribe. It helps the channel greatly. Please share with your friends and family. And once again, I appreciate you spending time with the Home Pro Heroes.